Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our final team for this, oh, for this session. So sad, but don't be sad. Look how lovely they are. So without further ado, our final, and dare we say, lovely team, Team Fate, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Glenn? Oh, yes, I'd be happy to be an I Lead USA mentor. Who's my team going to be? I got an email and I forwarded it to Tracy. Vera forwarded me this email. I think I need to do something with it. I know. Let's collaborate. Hey, great idea. We've been talking about this for years. Who else should we include? Hmm, I think we should invite librarians from all the different types of schools and from different departments at the public library to take part. Hey, this is freaking awesome. Let's apply. <laughs> it must have been fate. Freaking awesome. Team Evanston, I lead USA. Freaking awesome. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the final presentation of I Lead USA 2014. And we are going to take you on a freaking awesome journey. This is Team Fate's roadmap to connecting the Evanston Public Libraries and the Evanston School Libraries. So the team is? I'm Laura Antlin. I'm the Children's Outreach Librarian at the Evanston Public Library. Trisha Conley, I am the elementary school librarian at Washington Elementary School in Evanston. I am Tracy Hubbard, I'm the librarian at Dr. Bessie Rhodes School of Global Studies, a K-8 school. And sitting in the chair over there is Renee Newmeyer, who can't be with us today because she just had a baby, so congratulations to her. And Renee is the Young Adult Services Librarian at the Evanston Public Library. I am Kafir Philippe. I am the librarian at Nichols Middle School, which is a 6-8 school in Evanston. And over there is our mentor, Brian Smith. <laughs> Community. So with all of you, as you thought of your projects, you first one of the first things you need to do is identify your community. So who is our community? And our community is our students. The students that attend our schools, the students who use the public library. Evanston is the first suburb north of Chicago. We have 15 schools in our elementary middle school district, District 65. There are 10 elementary schools, two schools of choice, which are K-8 magnet schools, and then three middle schools, which are 6-8. And the Evanston Public Library has one main branch as well as two small smaller branches on the north and the south side of uh, Evanston. And what one of the things Evanston is known for is its racial diversity as well as its socioeconomic diversity. And our students reflect that diversity. So our issue is, how do we address communication barriers between our institutions to better serve K-8 students? And it's not like we haven't all talked together before, because we have and we've worked together, but we've never worked together and tackled an issue in a big way. I Lead You gave us the space, both the physical space and the mental space, to look at each other differently, to look at ourselves differently. And I think it also gave us opportunities to really, really think and take small, small steps. And that was such a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us. When Beck said, we're always a choice away from making change, it resonated with all of us. And I have to say, almost everything Beck said to us resonated with all of us. <laughs> and I think she spoke directly to us because our project is uh, different from everybody else's. We knew our community. We had no idea what we were going to do. I think initially we thought maybe we would come up with an app, or maybe we 
would have online tutorials, and that would bridge communication, or maybe we would make a web page. And I know that not knowing this stuff is definitely not in my comfort zone. I don't need to have all the directions, but I like to know where I'm going. So this was really, really uncomfortable for me. But our project has a lot of moving parts, and it's really relational. And so, like any relationship, it's messy, it's difficult, it takes a long time to cultivate. And before we could really roll this out in a bigger way to more librarians, we had to really work with each other and develop our relationship. And that's taken a long time. I think we really like each other and we enjoy working together, but there are times, like in any relationship, where we really are irritated with each other and the <laughs> way we do things. So our project is, has lots of components. It's about collaboration, it's about communication, it's about resource sharing, but mostly it's about relationship building. And this is what it looks like. So the first component was a survey and a social event. Yeah, so um, once we kind of tackled who our audience was, because we, we started out in this thinking, well, you know, teachers, you know, teachers are overwhelmed. We're librarians, we can offer services, and we can find out from them what would make their lives easier. And um, this was especially kind of, at least I felt, um, more coming from the charge of the public librarians. They thought that that would be really a great thing to do. And the three of us, I think, were more in the camp of, oh my gosh, do we put another layer on you know, teachers who are just getting mandates left, right, and upside down on their jobs and the expectations? And you know, is that what we aim to do? Um, and we know we get together with all 15 librarians on a monthly basis, but that for us feels like it's not enough. And it feels like there's some communication building and some um, things that could be done to support them as a whole. So um, we kind of battled it out in a sense of like what our thinking was from a public librarian standpoint as well as a school librarian standpoint. And we, you know, tucked it in a little bit and then we decided, yeah, you know, the school librarians are the key people for those teachers and that can be the way of supporting them and we can take it from there. So we surveyed at first, um, of course, our librarians. And we didn't just do the school librarians, but we did the other public librarians. And beyond Laura, for example, um, I didn't know anybody at the public library professionally. So even for us, I think this building of relationship was huge. And granted, even though I knew Laura and I've known her for years, it's like running past each other. You know, we're having a um, assembly. It's going to be about the summer reading program. Okay, what do you need? Do you need mics? Okay, come on in, do your thing. And then she's got to run out and go her way, and I'm back in, you know, teaching whatever. Um, so, like, really surveying our, our librarians, like, what would it look like? What do you need? What do you want to help you in your job? Because we know if we start there, then that can resonate out. So um, we took a back idea, how unusual, um, that we really, really loved. And it was about getting together informally in um, meeting at a bar. And we did the drawing. We passed this around. And, um, you know, of course, you know, it's like going on stage. It's like, oh my god, will anybody show up? Will they think this is weird? Do they think we're like going to, you know, make them do something like the next mandate, which we all get concerned and skeptical of like, okay, what is, what are we going to have to do now, you know? And um, lo and behold, people showed up. And we had a great time, and we had really good conversation. So, you know, I was sitting next to a public librarian I'd never met before who works in children's. I had no idea. And so it forged these early conversations and relationships that, you know, even through an informal meeting, you could see, like, wow, this could really go somewhere from this stepping stone. Um, in regard to the surveys that we gave, what was interesting is that the first one was, one of the big questions was, what do you see as the barriers to communication? And, you know, the responses might have been a little more obvious to us. But in another survey, we were asking, 
what kind of things do you want to do your job? You know, do you want a website or do you want apps? Maybe we could do tutorials on YouTube for you to teach you to do this or that. And nobody went for that. What they said is, we want more in-person time for training. We want to be there and have questions answered and talk about some of the struggles and strengths we have and go from that place. And so that was that moment of like, okay, it is about connectedness in that way, first and foremost. Which leads us to our next component, which is professional development. So we're taking all of this information, is that librarians are working in isolation, and we also, within our very community, have a lot of expertise, a lot of resources, and our own personal learning network that we can expand upon. Um, so at the beginning, we also needed to look at where we could work. So we talked about narrowing it down to the librarians. And one of the very easy ways is that the librarians at the beginning of the school year have a half day of professional development. So we were very intentional about planning it with the public librarians, with Renee, and with Laura. One of the ways that we started out the day was by showing um, David Lankis's innovation in the country video. I mean, it is freaking awesome. So, <laughs> and it talked about how libraries are centers of innovation. It kind of, we wanted to share, we're so excited about these ideas, we really wanted to share them with our fellow librarians and get them excited about it. It also talked about how it looks different. You know, each one of us is going to be slightly different. So we're different than the Evanston Public Library, but even within our school communities, mm -hmm. each one of us represent different constituents. And so we can take these ideas and kind of expand upon them. Um, and it was interesting because about a month later, one of the librarians at this development came up to me and she said, I've been thinking about that video. And Kristen has always been very adamant in her career in Evanston is that she never wanted to be known as the keyboarding queen. Mm -hmm. She never wanted to be known as the one that could fix the projector. She wanted to be known as, as the librarian and that that was a really important place to be. So this gave her a tool to expand upon that. And you know, she's thinking away and over the course of the year, we're gonna keep exploring those ideas. Um, after this professional development, uh, later in September, we had an optional one. We moved it to the Evanston Public Library. Um, Renee is very involved in the Tinker Movement in the northern suburbs, and so she was able to work with us, go through Makey Makey, go through Scratch, and kind of play with this idea. Um, one of the things that we've learned and one of the things that we have to get better about is really working with people to kind of define how that would look in your space, why it's important, and what it does. But we're going, hey, instead of going, yeah, we're the people that check out books, we're the knowledge creators. We're the innovators. We are going to step on this. Maker is something that I've seen in the public libraries, thought it was a great idea, um, heard about it at the first session, but at that second session, all of a sudden, it was like, wow, I can do this. And so the end result is I've played around with some of this, and through the course of the year, I'm going to keep expanding on it. But uh, the Sunday before I came, I had a student stop me at the grocery store. You know, it's always really fun. It's like you're checking out the meat section, and you hear this laughter behind you, Mrs. Hubbard, Mrs. Hubbard. <laughs> and um, what he wanted to talk about was the paper airplanes that they and his second grade sister, who I hadn't done it with, wanted to talk about the paper airplanes that were in the library and what they learned from that. Um, I've had a student come up to me who's not necessarily a great reader. Reading is a struggling, but when I pulled out a Lego we do, he's like, Mrs. Hubbard, I can do this. So all of a sudden, we're connecting that library in a very positive place. We're doing critical thinking, which is where Common Core is trying to take people, mm -hmm. is that we don't need to memorize things anymore. We are knowledge creators. 
before you move on to the next slide, I just want to say that this first professional development opportunity was one where Renee and I from the public library talked about databases and talked to the District 65 librarians, and we've never done that before. So that, even though it doesn't sound like anything radical or amazing, was really, really amazing for us. It was resource sharing that we haven't done in, in that way, and the librarians broke out and took the databases we talked about and tried to apply them to curriculum. We came back together to talk. So I think it was just another example of what ILEAD has done for us because we're taking the things that we're learning here and we're pushing them out to the librarians that we know. So that feels like a very powerful thing to me as well. And it, it, it really was freaking awesome because then I took those databases and used it with a sixth grade teacher who at first was going to just have them kind of do a Google search, but then you start showing them the functionality and you're thinking we're using Evanston resources in the Evanston schools. It's freaking awesome, but it started with that conversation from Laura and Renee. Um, all right, so the next component is the iPads and Chromebooks. Okay, so we're working on building relationships with the librarians the care and feeding of us all as librarians and the development and sharing of ideas, but our project also impacts directly students and teachers. So we had money to spend on technology. And District 65 is increasingly moving to a Google environment and has decided to buy uh, Chromebooks for students in three of the five middle schools to use. The other two middle schools have gotten a grant to do one, have, they provide one-to-one -one iPads for their kids. So about 40% of the students in Evanston are low income and many don't have access to computers. So we decided it would be a good idea to purchase Chromebooks. We purchased 13 Chromebooks for the public library. We purchased two iPads, they're too expensive to buy more than that. But the Chromebooks are going to be used for students to do their homework. So they will be in-house checkout items. And staff at the public library will have opportunity for professional development on how to use the Chromebooks and how to help the students. So we will be depending on District 65 to do some professional development with us. The iPads are really just for us internally so that anyone who comes in with their own iPad can talk to someone who knows what they're doing. And the children's department has people with varying degrees of technology expertise. I'm, I love technology. Not everyone around me does. So this is a way that we can help our students and, and bridge what goes on in the schools and have that, that hardware and software available to us. Um, we also rolled out at this time a teacher services brochure that Renee and I had worked on um, as well as a web page. Do we need to get to? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So this, again, not a radical idea for a lot of public libraries, but for us, yes, it was. So we now have an online way for teachers to request tours of the library, to, to request book talks, to, re to send us assignment alerts, which, again, we have badly needed because we get kids coming in with assignments. We have no idea that they're starting, and, we, and we're not prepared for them. But also, we have something <coughs> new, which is called teacher checkout. And Brian, if you can go back to the previous slide. Yeah. So we have these nifty red bags, and we have a way for teachers to check out materials, either by coming in and pulling them themselves or contacting us and having us pull materials and have them checked out on a school card, which is new to us, that doesn't incur any fines. So teachers are ecstatic. Um, Yay. <laughs> Say we're a little nervous about this. This is this we rolled out uh, two weeks ago, and we've gotten an incredible amount of responses from teachers, excited teachers, and we've actually gone beyond the 15 District 65 schools. So we sent the letters and opportunities to the principals and to the librarians at the high school, and at the seven private and parochial schools in Evanston. So we are spreading our resources out among all of the students in Evanston. So that's that's where we are with that. I a freaking awesome moment is that uh, <laughs> is that one of the librarians in the iPad pilot, one of the first apps that she requested was the EPL app. She's like, it works great. It goes to these sources. That was where she was going to lead the kids. And I would just chime in is for myself, and I know there's others that this would resonate 
for as well. Um, you know, you can give me teacher pages and all the bells and whistles, but if I don't have a relationship with you, it's possible I'll never get there. And so this piece to all of these great things is really key. All right, so the final component we're going to talk about is kind of our version of PR, <laughs> which are the um, two board presentations we did. We presented to the Evanston Public Library, Library Board, and we also presented to the District 65 School Board. So myself and Laura, uh, myself representing District 65 and Laura representing her public library, spoke in front of the library board um, one evening. It was the first time I had ever done such a thing. And what was really um, engaging to me and exciting was that I got to share with them what it meant to us as librarians to have this shared resource opportunity with them. Um, we all know, you know, with budgets and so on, it's like, well, you know, you can't have or we've got to cut this or that. And, you know, I think, and I think I may have said this, you know, also just stepping outside of my work, but thinking of myself being a community member and a taxpayer, what an efficient way to use cross-utilize resources and benefit more people. So, um, you know, we shared about that and um, it was, you know, again, this relationship, like these people know who I am now and I'm approachable and this is good. So when we were speaking to them, there was lots of smiling faces, but nobody said anything. And nobody <laughs> asked any questions, and we were a little dis disheartened. Um, and we got an email from our board president. That evening, they were also discussing the budget, so we had to actually get out of there. They didn't have time to talk to us. But they were very excited about what we are doing. And from that presentation, um, the board has committed to a dedicated staff position in 2015, um, uh, which is a new position for us to have an elementary school li liaison. So that was huge. Yeah. Um, from there, uh, Renee and I went to the uh, District 65 <laughs> board, pre-baby, um, with the support of everybody uh, on our team came and supported us at this and we spoke to the school board and you know with the library board you know they're all about libraries with the school board it's like hmm didn't let's, think about that let's check that our before. budget <laughs> And it was a very positive um, experience. One of the things that uh, we really talked about is that there is this initiative in Evanston called Cradle to Career, in that we want our kids, you know, we have them from cradle to when they start, you know, going to college, and we want to make sure that we make them as prepared and ready as possible. Well, we, in essence, we're there already. I mean, we are talking about how we can support them when they go to story hours at the public library and how that will wind through the school library and back. We're, we're doing this, and they were really supportive of that idea. Um, the next night I was at my son's student conferences at the high school, ran into one of the school board members, Katie, and she stopped me and she was like, she didn't say freaking awesome, but <laughs> close. close. It was along those lines. And she was just, I never thought about it before. I never thought about those nuances. We're also bringing up to them that we have the resources in Evanston. So one of the out another freaking awesome moment is that we got the courage to really pursue the fact that tell us about the databases in the district because we're looking at databases that aren't necessarily really being used. Can we align that money somewhere else? So Trish and some of the other libraries, librarians in the district are forming an ad hoc committee and we're going to come up with a way to evaluate and part of our evaluation is not just looking at what we have but balancing out what we have with what the public libraries offer it, so having it. And we got we, press. Yeah, we were excited to get press. <laughs> yeah, just to chime in um, about the database uh, group that's going to form. I mean, we've been talking about this ever since I started at my school for, you know, seven plus years. 
And um, it's gone back and forth, and it's been primarily very top down. Like, oh, we're, we've got this now, and it's like, well, who'd you ask? You know, did you ask your users if they wanted that? You know, it's like been gone that way. So this is very hopeful. But the other thing that was very interesting, and you know, we have a new administration this year, so this is probably part of it. But for the first time ever, we actually saw how much money they spend on databases, and it's like. Oh my gosh, for that price, really? Like, do we really even use it? So it's really great that we're being, you know, looked at as stakeholders in a, you know, a, re a more real way than in the past. So we're, we're looking forward to working on this. You know, we're making ourselves stakeholders. Yeah. We're not, mm -hmm. we're demanding that we yeah. be stakeholders. Mm -hmm. This is what we do well. All right, where do we go from here? So. The big thing that we're going to continue to do is build collaborations and build partnerships. Specifically, we all have little kind of projects in play. Uh, Trisha's school has a large Latino population. They're going to continue collaborative efforts on behalf of the Latino population. Uh, Tracy and Laura are going to be presenting to the PTA next week, I believe, mm -hmm. on book selection, but hopefully that will lead to more presentations and more collaboration. Um, Renee and I, when she is done with her maternity leave, <laughs> are going to be doing amazing Maker Fair for the eighth grade students at my school in April, which we're really excited about collaborating on that with, uh, collaborating with that together. Um, we're going to do continued professional development, as uh, Laura and Tracy and um, Trisha have all mentioned. So far, it's always been the public libraries coming to us, but now we need to flip it and we need to go to them and we need to talk about concerns that they have and how we can support them, not just how they can support us. Um, we also want to emphasize, and Laura already mentioned this a little bit, but the public library is also continuing to reach out to all the schools in Evanston. They already work with the high school, but more collaborations with the high school to reach out to the private schools and the parochial schools. Evanston um, has a rich, of, we have a lot of schools. <laughs> And so um, the Evanston Public Library has always worked with all those schools, but they're going to continue to enhance those collaborations as well. Um, we wanted to end by explaining why we chose the Brady Bunch <laughs> from that first little video. I'm going to presume that most of you know what TV show that is, uh, but for those of you who don't, uh, it's about a man with three sons who marries a woman with three daughters and, you know, messiness and fun and laughter ensue. Um, but... We will, you know, we, as we kind of mentioned in this presentation, we felt kind of like two families in the beginning, and now we've come together and we're stronger as a whole. And like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> so we Here's the story <laughs> of five librarians. <laughs> for giving, the op giving us the opportunity to do this, for providing us with a lot of laughter, a lot of fun, a little stress. Um, <laughs> and little to thank stress. all of you in here for all of your support. It's been really wonderful getting to know all of you and working with all of you, and your projects have all been freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and what we have up here is the literal roadmap that we put together for the board presentations, and we thought we could leave it up for, if, I'm hoping most of you can read it, um, so if you have any questions, you can refer to that, or anything else you might want to ask us? Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> I love the idea of teacher checkouts, but when you first said it, I assumed that you were checking out teachers. <laughs> which actually they make good pets. An idea to check out teachers because um, as a as a parent, I mean, we have career, we have open house night, we go here about curriculum, whatever. But I would just love to sit down with a math teacher, for example, for my 14-year-old. Go, I can't even understand the homework. Can you help me? I, there's an after that, but even you know, I just think that, you know, the next sort of community bonding is to bring the teachers into this and yeah. talk yes. about yeah. development. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, great job. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Christy. To build on that, um, at my when I was a public librarian, yeah. I had a homework lab in my library every week. We were across the street from a middle school. We had 30 kids in there every day. I could only do it once a week. 
but this was the piece that I was missing to actually make it successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you could easily do that. They were one-to-one -one Chromebooks, and they um, we had just regular note like laptops. We had a laptop lab that they could use. They could get on Chrome. They could still do everything that they needed. So right. you don't don't think you needed the specific materials. We also got a grant and paid teachers from the school to come over after sure. hours and work with them Ooh, for an wow. hour or two, one-on-one yeah, -on -one or two-on-one. And so this is the piece that I needed because I didn't have those relationships with the school. Mm. It's, it's um, interesting because we've, we've been actually talking about tutoring when we started talking about yeah. that in September and, and how are we going to make this a possibility at the library and, and who do we need to talk to. And so I do feel like we've, we've begun these conversations. It's going to be yeah. easier to move forward. Well, and you're making me think is that I was just approved to do an extended day activity using Maker, and we're going to combine kind of the sixth and the third grade. So when Renee gets back and the three D print, the three D printer is working now. <laughs> um, you know that that's just another extension to make sure that we incorporate that. Back. Um, and just to follow on for a second, you guys know about the Human Library, right? The it's a it's a social mm. idea where you can like check out a cop or check out the gay person or whatever and have a conversation. <laughs> um, it's in like no, they did in Europe. Yeah, oh, that's in New York, right? They, they're, they're, they're out, so it's yeah, right. they're all over now. Okay. But look it up just to kind of get a model of what it might look like. Check, check out it's an interesting idea. Yeah. But I also wanted to say in the. Um, the group conversations that we had about asking hard questions, both conversations really focused on like making a case for yourself and advocating and that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to like point out this is a great example of that, like how it starts with these relationships and it starts kind of messy and like kind of like where are we going? And then you like end up at board presentations where like somebody gets hired and there's actually money behind it. You know, this is like all what we've been talking about. So. Kudos to you for figuring out, and, you know, like, this is what it looks like, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. this is what it looks like. Thank you to you for Thank helping you. us. Yeah. I just, yeah. I want to comment that what you've done is really hard, really, really difficult, and that you have had so much traction is awesome, freaking awesome. It is <laughs> wonderful, and I hope that you will consider doing some presentations at yeah. Islama yeah, we're already talking some about of the it. conferences because I am so jealous of what Evanston is doing here. Right. I'm like, we should be doing this in every city in this right. state. It's, right. yeah. it uh -huh. is, it's right. hard though. It's, you really, know, hard. it's really hard. Yeah. And I, I just want to acknowledge how, what an incredible accomplishment this is. It's just fabulous. Thank you. It's I Lead You essay um, <laughs> brought us to that. So just to bring out my like kindergarten side, kindergarten teaching side, if this guy's side of the room could say to I Lead You freaking, and this side say awesome, <laughs> we'll see who can say it louder, but on the count of three, freaking, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry, the, the light's in my eyes, but. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just curious about the, the outreach when you're trying to, like, for, especially for the public librarians, you're trying to reach out to public schools and to private schools, because I know I'm living in St. Louis now, and there's a real tension between public schools and private schools, because a lot of people feel strongly that the private schools are taking a lot of money out of the public schools and a lot of support out of the public schools. And while the teachers mostly get along like the moment there is some sense of like public money going to support private schools, people get really uncomfortable. So I'm just curious how that dynamic works out. It's, it, it, it's you know, it's not like we have charter schools so, uh, yeah, so in Evanston. Um, I think each of those schools, we, we have a lot of different kinds of populations in Evanston. So the public schools generally are the, the level playing fields. And then, then there's all, you know, if you want a Catholic institution, if you want a more of a prep school environment, 
And um, honestly, we haven't reached out to them. It's, it's almost an interesting question is like, how could we expand our personal le learning network with them mm -hmm. to share kind of some commonalities? Um, we're in it for the same reason, is to ultimately, as Kefera started out, it's to support our students. We had to start baby steps like uh, we heard yesterday, but it's what can we do to support these kids? And I, I haven't really noticed a lot of tension. I, I know what you're talking about, but I haven't seen that as an issue. I also, th I also know that the private schools, the parochial schools, draw from other communities too. And I think that I think that the majority of Evanston um, residents go to the public schools, to be honest. But we did feel that there was it would be difficult for us to reach out and offer services and ignore the place just down the street sure. too. Sure. Or the and there's a new um, a new high school academy that's like a block away. So it, and they reached out to us for for you know for help and support. So. We're just being magnanimous, <laughs> being big, and hopefully they don't all come to us at the same time. Please, please aim for the 2015 conference because it's going to be multi-type anyway, mm -hmm. and what a perfect mm. session. We talked, um, MJ and I talked about that yesterday, so I, I'm, we're thinking along those lines. Good. I'm going to send reminders to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks, you. Thank you. Thanks.